Hi everyone, this is the second part of stroke and today I'll be concluding the presentation on stroke. Yes, someone walked to his or a doctor and asked this question. How can I send it coming? That is, how can I sense that stroke is about to occur or I'm about to have stroke? There's what we call transient ischemic attack. It is called pre-stroke. Some call it mini-stroke. That is what most people will experience. It will occur within, the, just as the name says, transient. There will be full recovery all within 24 hours. There's what we call amaurosis forget just no go a little bit blind. Some just no not know where they are. You are lucky if you have transient ischemic attack. That is a signal that you should get all the tests done and start secondary prevention immediately because that arouses a major stroke. That signals a major stroke is at the corner. So if you have been diagnosed with transient ischemic attack. Congratulations. Compare with your doctor. Let them get everything done. And please comply with their pieces of advice and medications. Then, beyond transient ischemic attack, it's not everybody that will have transient ischemic attack anyway. But if it happens, and it goes beyond that, then it could be full stroke. And what will happen? When you look at the face, there could be drilling to one side, the side that is paralyzed, the opposite of it in the brain. The tongue will be twisted while talking, we call it dysarthria. And when as I straight out, you know, there will be drifting pronatal drift. Some will not be able to express themselves again and some won't be able to comprehend, which is dysphasia, it could be expressive or comprehensive. Disturbance of motor systems like muscles will probably lead to hemiparesis or fan paralysis, hemiplegia. There is possibility of disturbance of understanding leading to confusion. The patient will just be confused. And when there's disturbance of vision, there will be blood vision. There's possibility of dizziness and disturbance of gait will appear in the form of ataxia or imbalance. So when they walk the swing to either side, depending on the affected one. Disturbance of autonomic system, there will be bladder and fecal incontinence. So they will have what we call um, motion accidents. That means they won't be able to pee appropriately, they pee on their body and then Pull on their body as well. There's possibility of headache, nausea, vomiting, and they could become weak, fatigue. How do we treat this patient? First thing first, call 911, please, because time is of the essence. If the individual cannot take aspirin, like if there's aortic dissection or a, a severe asthma or bleeding in any part of the body or allergy to aspirin, then use that breather more. You can check if breathing and environment is safe. Raise the head with pillow and lie on one side. Check the pulse. But if the person is pulseless, if you can't pick any pulse, then start CPR. 
is likely there is cardiac arrest. We cover the patient with blankets to keep him or her warm and don't move the weak limbs, please. If all this early part is put in order, the possibility of recovery is there because it's all about time. At the hospital, the doctor will take decision on whether to give clot busters. The combinant tissue plasminogen activator, activator is favored and that should all happen within the first four and a half hours of onset. When the CT scan result is back, then the decision will be taken whether surgery is to be embarked upon. And the arteriotomy of the carotid or any other arteries will be determined based on Doppler or angiography. If it is hemorrhagic, no question, it is neurosurgery for drainage. With a desired blood pressure that is associated here, you give your medications, but please don't crash down the BP. If it's aneurysm, it's the work of neurosurgeon to clip. And arteriovenous malformations would need to be repaired. The prognosis here is that Though more men than women have strokes, it is a drama. However, they have less disabilities and they have greater recovery rates, more than women. The stroke-related disabilities are impaired daily living activities. In other words, more men will have stroke, less women will have stroke, but the women that will have stroke will not be able to carry out their daily activities when compared to men. They could be more depressed than men, they could be having fatigue more than men, and mentally impaired more than men. And of course, poor quality of life after stroke more than men. Actually, prevention is rehabilitation. At that stage, the patient will be referred to physiotherapist. In conclusion, prevention is better than cure. So, if Modifiable risk factors are identified along with non-modifiable risk factors. If we cooperate with our doctors, we are not supposed to come down with stroke. And if our toilet happens and we act on time, it's not likely that we'll die from it. Thank you for watching my presentations. Please subscribe to my channel so that you can Get these presentations as soon as they are released. Thank you.